Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shake the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-6024. Item number, 6024. Containment Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-6024 is to be kept in a humanoid containment chamber while its anomalous abilities are sufficiently suppressed by Amanda Green. Mrs. Green may be provided aid in the containment of SCP-6024 upon request and is to undergo psychological evaluation on a monthly basis. SCP-6024's chamber has been outfitted with a functioning nasogastric feeding tube and urinary catheter. The entity must be moved every two to three hours to avoid the formation of pressure ulcers. Cleaning of the anomaly's physical form will occur bi-weekly. Description SCP-6024 is a white male of advanced age. Despite the fact that SCP-6024 is currently comatose and would medically be considered brain dead, the anomaly's consciousness exists and functions inside a pocket reality referred to as SCP-6024-01. The anomalous effects of SCP-6024 manifest when any human within its range enters the rapid eye movement stage of sleep. Subjects are rendered superficially brain dead as their consciousnesses are transported into SCP-6024-01. Anatomical functions within participants' bodies continue and brain activity returns when subjects are awoken, though affected persons will not rouse without the influence of external stimuli. Scranton reality anchors are inadequate for mitigating this effect. It is theorized that the reality transfer is too insignificant to be affected by circumambient Hume stabilization 1. The range of SCP-6024's anomalous properties has been found to have an inversely proportional relationship with the entity's current mental state and can be measured by use of the on-site camp counter. Amanda Green has been inducted to counteract the properties of SCP-6024 by improving the anomaly's overall mood and decreasing its influence. Discovery Foundation personnel station within the proximity of SCP-6024 reported encountering anomalous activity. Due to the seemingly non-belligerent nature of the entity, Dr. Charles Mobley was tasked with attempting contact. This action engendered the successful containment of SCP-6024. Addendum 6024.A Document 6024-01 Debriefing Transcript Document 6024-01 Interviewer, Dr. Adam Bunchi Interviewed, Dr. Charles Mobley Doctors Mobley and Bunchi are seated across from each other within a Foundation safe house. Bunchi, all right so now that you finally roused, what did you see in there? Dr. Mobley briefly drinks from a cup and then places it onto a side table. Well when I first got there, got into wherever it was, I looked down and saw my body. It took me a little while to realize that it wasn't mine. I was looking at a near-perfect replica, yet somehow I knew it wasn't real. Bianchi, okay, and can you describe some of the entities our boys in the field reported seeing? Yeah, they had surrounded me, or maybe I was just thrown into the pile. Their bodies were all wrong in the same way. If that's everybody in this city right now, we have a hell of an amnesty cessation job on our hands. Bianchi, oh well, they've done it before and they can do it again. Anyway, as for everything that happened to you in there, we'll need to get it all on tape. Let's get it out of the way and we can be on the next flight back to 88. As much as I'd love to be back already, I don't think this will be so easy to clean up. Bianchi, and why is that? Dr. Mobley picks up a manila folder lying beside him and opens to a graph of data recorded during his excursion. If my memory serves right, these readings from our camp counter correlate directly with when I interacted with the entity controlling the place. Bianchi, hold on, you never mentioned meeting somebody in charge. I'll get to that in a second. For now, just look here, if I can recall my exact conversation with it. The jumps listed seem to align with when I brought up how the hell everyone got there. 
Then this large dip lines up with when I comforted the thing. Bianchi, you gave consolation to an anomaly? It looked like a despairing old man crying about its wife, and I had to get information out of it somehow. Bianchi, if you think doing so was justified I won't argue, but I know some higher ups who might disagree with that sort of interaction. Also, if it just looked like an old man, how did you come to the conclusion that it was running the place? Knowing that was instinctual, and I think the others felt it too because they had all taken a few steps back from it. Bianchi, did the entity end up giving you anything to work with? Not really, it seemed to be as dazed as the rest of the people in there. The thing actually thought that it, and the rest of them, were in some kind of purgatory. Oh yeah, and it can remember a car accident before ending up there. Bianchi, I might be able to work with that tidbit. Did it say anything that deviates from our established time frame? It thinks that they've been there for about a week. Bianchi, all right then, I'll run through car crashes around here in the past two weeks and see if anything turns up, though I'm gonna need a proper physical description for that. I'll write something up after this is over. Bianchi, sounds good, are we done here? Almost. I want you to get some pre-approval from 88's containment head for reigning in a civvy. Bianchi, what's that about? Lifting the curtain for a civilian is not casual office work, I'd need a damn good reason. Well if my theory on the range of this thing pans out to be correct, then I want to bring in its wife to try and suppress the field. Bianchi, do you really think that's our only option here? Moby, no not quite. I would just like to have a head start on the proceedings in the case that we go through with it. Bianchi, I suppose it's better to be prepared than to have an out-of-control anomaly. Buzzer? Buzzer. Dr. Bianchi reaches over to the camera and ends the recording. Lead researcher printed name. Adam H. Bianchi. Lead researcher authorization signature. Adam Bianchi. End of document. Recovery. SCP-6024's physical form was discovered by Foundation specialists after Dr. Mobley's successful interaction. Following positive identification, personnel airlifted the body from Cape Regional Medical Center and delivered it to Site 88 Subsidiary Warehouse B2 for provisional containment. Addendum 6024.B Document 6024-02 Log Transcript Document 6024-02 Logged by Dr. Charles Mobley Subject SCP-6024 Dr. Mobley is seen pulling his hand away from a keyboard. Containment Update Log Number 1 Presently, I don't think any words describe our situation better than not ideal. We have assumed that 30 to 40 kilometers is the maximum distance the effect can spread as it does not seem like the entity can become much more distressed. Bearing that in mind, I don't think any change in location for a more secure Veil 3 should be considered at this time. Concerning the civilians trapped within SCP-6024-01, when we removed the physical form of SCP-6024 from Cape May, the victims were immediately released and have since been given amnestic treatment. Unfortunately, this caused SCP-6024 to become completely alone within the dimension. To counter this, we have given some of the more charismatic on-site employees the opportunity to take rotations within SCP-6024-01 and keep the entity in a decent mood so as to not allow it to regress and ruin the minimal progress made thus far. Hey Dr. Bianchi, come over here. Do you have anything to add to the log before I shut it off? Bianchi, have you said anything about moving forward? I have not. Bianchi, all right, I'll take over on that bit and then we can wrap up the log. Dr. Mobley moves aside and allows Dr. Bianchi to bend down in front of the computer. Bianchi, the current long-term goal for this project is to comfortably fit SCP-6024 into a Site-88 containment chamber, because the Foundation considers it impractical to have this warehouse and several others in the vicinity engulfed by anomalous effects. As you can imagine that day is most likely quite far off. Bianchi, but our biggest upcoming event involves me slogging through paperwork in order for a civilian to see her partner again. 
though we all seem to agree this is by far the easiest solution besides outright destruction. Bunchi, God knows that would certainly be simpler. Dr. Bunchi places his hand onto the keyboard and the recording ends. End of document. File for civilian induction. Dr. Adam Bunchi requests permission to make use of one members of the civilian population in the containment of SCP-6024. The following documentation has been submitted in an attempt to provide context for this request. SCP-6024 Effects Overview Document 6024-01 Document 6024-02 Council Vote Summary Nay. O five dash 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 Nay. O five dash O five dash O five dash of same status approved Addendum sixty twenty four dot C Document six thousand twenty four dash O three Log transcript Document six thousand twenty four dash O three Logged by Dr. Charles Mobley Subject, SCP-6024 Dr. Mobley can be seen grinning while pulling his hand away from the keyboard. Containment update log number two. I was ecstatic while reading the results of our testing, and I feel even better announcing them now. It was all a humongous success, the range actually dropped to zero for several minutes before staying steady under 100 meters. A crew was quickly called in and constructed ad hoc quarters for Mrs. Green to stay in appropriately situated right next to SCP-6024's chamber. She's still a little bit apprehensive of the Foundation, though I believe that to be perfectly understandable and will change given some time. We even learned that they used to write poetry together, facilitating their hobbies, I'm sure, will be an easy additional success. We still have a ways to go until our goal, but I don't think I am remiss in being at the very least a little excited at this milestone. Of course, with all this success, I would be remiss if I didn't mention some of our current shortcomings. Most notably of which is the fact that Mrs. Green, for the benefit of her health, cannot be installed within SCP-6024-01 permanently, or else we may lose our only chance at effective containment. I think it all more or less boils down to the what-if scenarios. What if we lose Amanda Green? Both she and the anomaly are exceedingly old and frail. I'd go so far as to say SCP-6024 is in a worse state than when it arrived but I don't think I'm qualified to state that opinion on something barely noticeable. Dr. Mobley briefly sighs. Assuming that nothing goes horribly wrong, I think that we are at least on the right track. Dr. Mobley places his hand onto the keyboard and the recording ends. End of document. Incident report. Incident severity level. Yellow. Active lead researcher. Adam Harold Bunchy. While commencing scheduled cleaning of SCP-6024, a nurse assigned to the task inadvertently removed the subject's left index finger. Investigation into the severing revealed that the physical form of SCP-6024 is deteriorating. The cause of this rapid decline in condition is currently subject to intense scrutiny. For employee safety, personnel are no longer permitted to sleep within SCP-6024's range. Amanda Green has been granted special access in order to extend effective containment of the anomaly. SCP-6024 is not to be informed of its affliction but is to be routinely questioned about its well-being. The entity has begun to cease life function and is beyond treatment. By her own request, and through unanimous vote, Amanda Green will remain within SCP-6024-01. Safety concerns have been voiced and summarily dismissed on account of Mrs. Green's willingness. Document 6024-04 Logged by Dr. Charles Mobley 
Subject, SCP-6024. Dr. Mopley appears disheveled and settles into a chair. They both passed away this morning at the exact same time, though I suppose we don't really know if just the bodies died or their minds went with it. Evidently the anomaly was linked to it, as the effect appears to have dissipated completely. Dr. Mobley chuckles softly. It looks like Bunchi was right about the easiest solution after all. Oh, and we figured out what went wrong. A colleague wrote the first law of thermodynamics on our whiteboard and it suddenly clicked. The reality transfer occurring every time someone entered the dimension was so insignificant that nobody really stopped to consider where the energy to do so came from. Adam and I fucking killed him with our incompetence, or perhaps we didn't, and now I'm left to wonder if eternity in a void is better than dying. I'll rewrite the classification tomorrow, I can't afford any more thought to this right now. Dr. Mobley places his hand onto the keyboard and the recording ends. End of document. Thank you for tuning in, we hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did please subscribe, like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.